Hi guys, welcome to Comentos. My name is Apoorv and today we have Deepak and Abhijit, the co-founders of Moustache Backpackers Hostel as our guest. So from starting a backpackers hostel to the concept of it, we are going to talk about all. Let's start. The first mm-hmm. question is, how will you mm-hmm. explain this to a five years old, a backpackers hostel? Abhijit. A backpackers hostel. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think a backpacker hostel, uh, I would probably explain to a five-year-old that this is a place where you stay and meet other travelers, some some place where you can make friends. So I think a five-year-old definitely would understand, uh, you know, more about where to, how to meet people, making more friends, you know, so, and in fact, this is something which has already happened with my, my younger son. Uh, he was staying with us in our Goa property and daily morning he used to get up, uh, he used to sleep with us and he used to get up and go towards the dorms and he used to go to the 18 bed dorm where he could find maximum people and he used to interact with them. His was This was his daily routine. He, he used to get up at 9 o'clock, I mean get, get out of the room at 9 o'clock, move to the dorm start interacting with people over there, tell him, tell them stories, hear stories from them. <laughs> okay. and, uh, you know, this is a uh, good place for people to understand. That's how, uh, you know, the kids can understand that it's a place where they can make friends. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Uh, now, second one is for Deepak. Deepak, how will you make a five-year-old understand the concept of Moustache franchising model? See, uh, honestly, for a five-year-old kid, uh, difficult to understand franchisee uh, as a term itself. But uh, uh, probably, uh, uh, I would say that moustache create awareness and um, uh, franchisee owners create atmosphere. So ek, ek aisa, uh, there, there could be an atmosphere or a vibe which a franchisee uh, owner creates. And we leverage that atmosphere and create awareness to the to the world that uh, these kind of places can exist in uh, in uh, tourism. Okay, it really is is complicated, right? Even for me. Yeah, <laughs> it, it it is a complicated franchise term itself is a very complicated terminology for uh, five year old kid. Totally get it. And the last one for both of you, and I want you guys to answer. I mean, uh, each one by one, the importance of solo travel. Um, I think the importance of solo travel, uh, when you travel solo, uh, you probably, you know, learn a lot of things around, uh, it's a different experience for, uh, for someone because you get to interact a lot of new people, get to hear their stories, a lot of different things that you would, you know, come across. Uh, unless, uh, and if you're traveling in a group, you would probably not tend to meet with other travelers around. So importance of solo travelers to, you know, if you, if you want to know more people, connect with a lot of other uh, guys, hear their stories, a lot of experiences that you can actually learn from others. Uh, that, that's the most important part of traveling solo. Hmm. And what about yeah, you? Similarly, I would say, yeah, similarly on the same line, I would say that uh, uh, it's uh, uh, the importance of solo traveling is to actually enhance your observation skill because when you are into in, into the world, you observe a lot of things, and so you can enhance your observe, observation skill, and also you can learn from the universe. I mean, as Abhishek also said, learning is an uh, is a continuous process. So whole universe is there to uh, to learn. Okay. Okay. Totally get it. Now, second question is, how did the first moustache hostel came into being? So that's a, this, this one's a long story. Uh, we were, uh, uh, you know, to, t- to tell you exactly and truthfully, we were not a part of moustache then when it was the first hostel. Okay. Um, this was something that the, way back in 2013 when, when moustache uh, had its first hostel was started by Amber Jalan. Mm-hmm. Um, he could not continue the operations. He could not continue his passion for love, which we can, we carried on for, for him. Uh, we came into picture in 2016. And at that point of time, it was just Mustache Jaipur that was there. Mm-hmm. And um, from there on, we grew the story to, to where we are today. Okay. And uh, where was the first hostel? I mean, Hostel first hostel was, the first hostel was in Delhi. Okay. The first and hostel was the date? The inauguration uh, date? Uh, we don't know the inauguration date, but uh, but I guess it was somewhere in the first week of uh, October, 2003. Okay. Okay, cool. 
And if I ask you, what's your weirdest memory from any of the Mustach hostel? What would it be? Weirdest memory. Yeah. Probably, uh, let me because I I remember that uh, nightmare Abhishek we had uh, during the time when a guest, a French uh, lady, uh, checked out from Pushkar Hostel and was completely untraceable for 15 days and who all the departments even from Delhi, uh, even Sushma Saraz was involved got involved in that okay. issue and uh, the departments were like uh, uh, I mean the guest was already checked out. From the property, and after that, he, she was missing. But still, all the departments were behind us, uh, madly okay. that as if we have actually uh, done something wrong. And that episode went for a uh, long fifteen days. And I remember Abhishek was looking for CCTV cameras to just to prove to the departments that that guest has already checked out from the from the Pushkar property. Damn. And later I on, remember. that guest. Yeah. She was traced in uh, some organic farm in Alwar where there was no network. And uh, after 15 days, when and, uh, she, she herself came out that I am alive. And uh, uh, her family members from France were continuously back to back were calling Abhishek. I think Abhishek, they, they were calling you. I, yeah, yeah, I wasn't connected with them. And uh, they were uh, constantly messaging me. We had sent them photos, videos of that of this lady actually checking out from our property. Uh, she had actually checked out with someone else, and uh, you know, so police was actually behind uh, uh, trying to figure out who this other person was. Unfortunately, this other person was not staying with us, so okay. we had no clues on uh, who that other person is. We could not identify who is this other person, where she is gone, what is happening. So, so there was a long investigation that was actually going on. For, for, for a good uh, you know few, uh, few days. Damn, yeah. I remember I was at this hostel in Delhi, uh, Mad Packers. And uh, there's this woman, I mean, she was somewhere around 60. She was from Spain. Uh, and she has been living in, illegally in uh, India for three years. And okay. we came to know that after a week, after she had stayed in Mad Packers. So what happens was, whenever, I mean, she used to look for people to come and talk mm-hmm. to. And when she comes, uh, she was like, Life is just a way towards that, and she's a dance. And she was so oh. weird. I mean, we all get to freaked out totally. And then one day she ran away. So it totally, yeah, resonated with you this. Know, it, 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 this industry is all about a lot of weird ex- experiences that you will get to know. Every time uh, there, is, there is something new that has happened, something which has never, which would have never happened before. You know, all different kind of weird experiences that 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 may have uh, happened. Something uh, sometimes uh, you know it, it, it has been good uh, positive. Sometimes it has also been negative. It's a mixed batch of things. But yes, you know you you tend to get these weird experiences every now and then. And it comes with a lot of responsibilities, right? I mean, people see okay, our boss are logo se mil rahe and you're having fun and all. Like you know, responsibilities are you right? Exactly. What happened? And nobody sees that part. I think. But nobody sees that part. Responsibilities are more important part that people tend to ignore. They would uh, would not know. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, it's a very formal question. One thing that people usually ask with the, I mean, in the hospitality industry, how does the pandemic affected you guys and how did you cope up with it? Uh, I think uh, it, it's a it's a question which which generally everyone knows. Pandemic was was uh, sort of like a death sentence to uh, you know to all the to travel or tourism companies, particularly the accommodation companies like us. Uh, you know, companies which are operating number of units. Uh, you have heavy rental expenses, a uh, heavy um, you know staff cost. Um, you know, one of the ways that we had to actually, um, you know, we, we had to take a lot of hard measures to be able to survive through this pandemic. Um, the, the initial phase, the first phase, the first six months was the toughest, where we had to actually sort of, you know, uh, sort of lay out all our employees. Um, we, we, we had to tell them that, you know, there is no way possibility that we could probably absorb them or give them regular salaries. We tried to formulate some, some kind of mechanism where we could probably try to generate something for them, uh, which which would, uh, you know, entail them to also earn something, but not keep us under pressure where we'll have to bring in something, uh, you know, out of the way from our uh, funds to, to help them survive. 
So we tried to devise uh, methodologies or options for, for our team members. But again, that was the hardest and most painful time for us. Uh, keeping, keeping track on all the properties, we had to very hard, negotiate very hard with all the property owners. Uh, you know, because uh, as the law said, there was no, uh, you know, uh, way where we could probably get away with without paying rentals. So a lot of negotiations went through on that. Uh, a lot of places, places we could get, we, we were able to get favorable terms. Some of the properties, there were no favorable terms which were available. So we had to, you know, take hard calls on something of that sort. Tough times. Again, a tough situation, tough, uh, very tough first six months, six to eight months. Uh, then we decided on changing the way or the pattern of our operations. So initially, when Mustache started, and even pre-pandemic levels, we were primarily, um, you know, driven through our or our revenues were primarily driven through uh, international travelers. Post-pandemic, uh, we we started thinking of new ways and innovative ways of how we could probably, you know, continue to survive and expand. So we started concentrating more on the domestic crowd. Mm -hmm. and how uh, the hostel industry can become the you know the new age era for the entire domestic round and how this can be portrayed as uh, you know as the newer level for for the younger generation on how how this can be become a product for them so you try, you, you've tried revolutionizing on that and then you've tried to add add more onto the experiences side which has been a uh, has been a major change in our business model so from just a hostel company, we have tried and we have now become a, an experienced company now. That's why you see the logo uh, from Mustache Hostel now. We are Mustache Escape. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, in fact, Instagram username, right? I, I saw that. Correct. It used to be Mustache Hostel before, but now we are Mustache Escapes because we are uh, you know, trying to do a lot of the experiences side, a lot of new experiences that we are trying to develop. Uh, the latest one that we just, uh, you know, did successfully was was a train run uh, a 40 kilometer train run through the uh, through the uh, you know tigers of a tiger jungle in Pachmari region okay. so there were about 30 participants participants who participated from various regions there was a 40 kilometer run where people had to run through the tiger forest okay uh, you know something which was very unique uh, we have to take permissions from a lot of departments. Tourism right. industry was a tourism department of MP was involved. Uh, the the uh, the uh, the forest department we have to take a lot of permissions from forest department. Special permissions were granted to us to operate this kind of a product. But this is so cool here. I'm I'm hearing this for the first time. I think. Yes, it's it's a unique product. This was this was happening for the first time. You would never hear about you know something like this or an experience running through a tiger forest. Without a gypsy, so people were actually walking on their feet throughout their uh, throughout this place. Okay, Deepak, if I ask you, uh, pre-COVID moustache yes. and post-COVID moustache, what has mm -hmm. changed for good? Now, I think we are more prepared. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There are a couple of things which happen uh, in, a, in, a, in a, for the betterment of moustache because I feel now moustache escape is more aggressive in tourism. Uh, Industry, we are uh, we are uh, we 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 are going towards one-stop solution for end-to-end -end experiences to a, to a, to a, to a guest to a customer. Mm -hmm. uh, previously, we were we were into only accommodation business. So I I found it more interesting now for mustache escape growth and futuristic aspect which we both are taking together. So uh, this is something really amazing happened due to COVID. Otherwise, we were only into accommodation and stay stay and stay. Yeah. Okay, if I ask you guys, uh, what is it one thing that stops, uh, let's say, someone who is around 18 to 24 to coming to a backpackers hostel? What is something that stops a person from coming like, to a hostel? Kuch, kuch mindset, ya koi particular cheez ya kuch. Is there anything, I mean, which impedes them to your backpackers hostel? Se to hotel mein ruk um, I, I, I could think the other way around. There are a lot of things for an 18 to 20, 24 years for, uh, for, for that kind of a person to actually come and attract to this, to this, to this hostel industry. Uh, there is one thing that we have, uh, we, we have realized over the course of period after we started, uh, you know, um, serving more towards the domestic crowd is that domestic crowd needs a little bit of a comfort factor. So I think 
at this point of a time, what's happening is people consider a backpacker hostel as a budget stay. Uh, and I think this is what our uh, our thought process is very very different from what the, the, what what you could think about it is is we are not a budget stay we are actually an experiential stay. So and and when we started serving the domestic crowd, we realized that uh, instead of actually trying to put ourselves as a budget stay, we should probably enhance our 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 deliverables to the guests and start delivering premium services or a little bit luxury into this experience. So our luxury. Combined with experience is what we want to become, rather than becoming a uh, an experience along with budget or or a cheap accommodation. So so that's something which has been different. So I think maybe this is something where where some 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 people between this age, if they are looking for luxury, they may tend to uh, you know move towards the hotel side. Uh, but but I think this is something which we have uh, which we have realized that the the domestic crowd they have the uh, the potential to pay and they would enjoy if they are we are able to bring in more additional facilities to them and if we can enhance the comfort levels inside the hostel. Okay, and if I ask you, uh, do you have any five destinations uh, where you want to launch Mustache Hostel anytime soon? Your five favorite destinations. It can be in India or outside India. Oh, okay. There are many actually, not uh, five. Uh, for Mustache, actually, uh, the South South uh, India mm -hmm. is uh, still open. And uh, if we see uh, Mustache growth, in, uh, probably uh, we need to have few properties in South now to uh, uh, capture the market in a in a in a better way. So. I can name five cities in South India as well for sure, but in 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 North probably we want to have, we want to be uh, in new places, new upcoming places like in uh, Uttarakhand, uh, which is like Muteshwar, Nandital. I am from Uttarakhand. Uh, that, yes, okay. So that belt which we are looking forward because uh, in Himachal we already have four properties, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, in other side of Uttarakhand we already there into Rishikesh and. Uh, couple of campsite properties, but that belt towards Nanital and uh, uh, Mukteshwar and uh, uh, Munshiari. So those th that particular belt where we want to place Mustache in the near future, as well as a couple of cities in South of India. Varkala. Okay. We name three cities if you ask us where we want to be. There's, there, there's, there's no end to it. There's no end. Actually, we have a long list documented, in fact. <laughs> but there must be top five, right? A top five. See, actually, we never think that way. We, we think in a way that where the opportunity is coming from, because uh, uh, you know that Mustache is into franchisee model, right. and uh, from where the opportunity is coming. Uh, but yeah, uh, places like Kasol, places like uh, uh, Mukteshwar, places like Varkala. Uh, in fact, we want to have more properties in Goa. Uh, something. So these are the places which are coming in my mind right now. Okay. And uh, as a sole entity, as I mean, uh, personally, which places in India are your favorite? I mean, there has to be a top five in that, right? Yes, we yes, yes. yes. Right yeah, yeah. That definitely we have our personal choices that the, for, for, for me, if you ask me, I always like to go to their pool. Uh, it, it's a place where you, I mean, I feel good. Uh, then uh, a couple of more places, uh, probably I would say uh, Kasol is a, is a nice place. Uh, okay. I, Goa is another good, good place. Uh, Abhishek and me were together in Varkala and we still, I mean, after four years also, we are keep talking about Varkala. I've heard a lot about it, yeah, Varkala. Uh, yeah. Varkala is a place which is, place. yeah, interesting. So these are my places. I don't know about you, Abhishek. I wish I could. Well, uh, probably similar. I could. I could probably go and uh, put it as Goa as um, you know as the best place it could uh, could be. Uh, similar other places which could be around beach. Work lies another place where um, I would say there are a couple of good places in mountains as well. Smaller niche stations like as as the said, Kasol, or maybe you can take uh, you know smaller outskirts. So let's say there could be outskirts stations in uh, Manali. So not within the city Manali, but Outside Malali as well. Somewhere where you would find that niche, right? Not with the uh, with the entire drama. Okay. Now this is a written question that I have right here. 
uh, what is the most life changing piece of advice you have received that has molded you into who you are today do you like to answer abhishek um i don't know it, it it may not be a single piece of advice there are there are a lot of advices some of them are you know i i, I could not just remember it off hand there could be multiple ones which would would have probably helped uh, it's not not a single one a um, few things which have really helped me is reading books though i am not a a, a big time reader but but i generally like to read sometimes when when i do have a free time or traveling some with some times when i'm actually off work so i try to read a few books and most of the times that i read books is generally autobiographies okay uh, or stories of people who have uh, you know successfully done something so that's and, and, and there are a lot of things points or stories that you would come out from uh, from there okay let's come at that directly uh yeah, read from me yeah, sorry deepak yeah. yes. for me uh, probably i would say advice or an ex- past experience whatever but keep solving problem is the key i mean whether uh, in uh, you are anywhere but keep solving problem keeps you motivated and keeps you moving ahead uh, that would i my my answer that's good so yeah we have 8 minutes left and there's this new section on the top 3 so as you already said abhishek that you are into autobiographies right what are your top 3 autobiographies um rather than top 3 i would probably say the first the, the most uh, you know the the top level one and i think deepak is already facing faces i think he can understand uh i would say the autobiography of steve jobs that's been the most influential uh, you know yeah. uh, book for me um i had many takeaways from that but other than that i think two three everything else is is, is the same for me i cannot name any second or third but that's a, a clearly the uh, distinguishing factor steve jobs autobiography has been the number one for me i love that too. and what about you deepak are you into books first of all i am not actually in, in the books uh, uh, i i uh, i don't read books uh, but yes i am into movies more and i watch all type of movies <laughs> okay and what are your top 3 favorite movies let's say uh, see uh, from older time it's it if i did divar from a uh, few years back three beard and zindagi na milegi dobara these kind of movies i like okay acha personally i'm very curious to know i mean first of all what who do you admire personally i mean as an as an entrepreneur or as a person but ha huh, who do you admire ratan tata for me and for you abhishek I think I've already mentioned that Steve Jobs, I would say. And uh, let's say, what do you watch on your YouTube? I mean, what type of content do you consume consume on your YouTube as an entrepreneur and as a person differently? Uh, on YouTube, yeah, right, on YouTube. Um, generally. it's something which we do, which is which is very difficult we i we are not youtube uh, people uh, okay. hardly go on youtube youtube is generally when we we see someone shared a link with us okay here is something that's mostly the time that we go on to youtube i mean if we have free time you know surfing around on netflix is something that we do but that's suddenly only you know when we go home late at night we have you we'll try to get get to sleep just a uh, you know half an hour one hour of a, uh, you know watching the tv you just surf on netflix So hardly uh, we go to uh, you know uh, to YouTube. Generally, when we go around and looking at videos, now the, the preference has moved towards go towards Instagram. So we suddenly we you know we watch small reels and stuff like that, which is mostly. And as an entrepreneur, we we like to see uh, something which would help us in, in in moving into a particular direction into our business. So, for example, let's say if we find any. uh good ideas around on on instagram something which would help us in saying that okay this is a particular direction where we could move something which is fancy an experiential stay a good property anything of that sort that's okay what about you deepak so uh to be very honest professionally i uh, i see all uh, mustache escape uh, links either it is on <laughs> youtube 
Yeah. Uh, that's what I keep on watching, and including uh, uh, the competition as well. Professionally, yes, I do uh, follow competitions, uh, uh, their pages, videos, uh, content as well. But personally, as I said, I'm more into movies. So personally, I always watch movies. I'm uh, I can watch any type, any kind of movies. Okay. Um, do you listen to podcast? No, not uh, I don't. Uh, I don't. Okay. And if I ask you, who do you think is doing very good uh, in the travel space in terms of creating content? Namishik, can you can answer? I don't have any any cue. Uh, there, there may be a lot of people who is, who are good at creating for uh, you know con- travel content. There are hundreds of influencers, hundreds of people who is actually who are doing that. I mean, I don't know what uh, is it a particular uh, type that you're looking at. What I mean, there there, there are a lot of people around there. We, uh, we you know we like content coming from everyone. It's not like a particular something particular favorite uh, for us. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is section as an entrepreneur. I have two questions uh-huh. for you. Okay. First of all, what is that one thing your parents taught you that later turned out to be totally wrong? Parents taught me. I th- I would say it's not about uh, you know the parents taught me, but but it's usually a lot of times I've uh, you know felt a little bit of a you know resistance coming in from uh, from from my parents, particularly from from my father, when when I'm trying to do something new, something different. Uh, his idea was always suddenly that it was it is difficult, it is impossible. You mm-hmm. know, which I now realize that that's not that's not something which is true. I mean, if you if you have strong determination, if you want, uh, if you have the courage, there is nothing which is really impossible. You can always go out and hit and break a try on it. So my father was always very very skeptical. He wanted me to uh, move into a direction which is more one of the stable lanes, not something where you want to try out new things. And how does he know? I mean, how does he react? Sorry. How does he react to? I mean, what you're doing right now? I think um, now he's now he's fine. Of course, there are normal, uh, normal again. Uh, whenever even with this, now we will try to experiment a lot. Um, there are usual thoughts that that would come into him and say, okay, fine, you know, this is not correct. Even with with, with what we are trying to do now. We keep on experimenting. So I remember last time that we had an argument about one of the rooms that I was trying to create, where I was trying to do something different, absolutely unique with the flooring. You know, and um, you know, I wanted to do a flooring which was not made of a regular material; it was made of a epoxy. And I was like, no, I I was adamant that this is something that I wanted to do. I would not change my mind for whatever it is, and I actually did it. And I think for now. For in the last two three years, it is fine. It's just that nothing bad has happened. Of course, I realize that okay, it can be. And, and, and yes, in the hotel industry, you need to innovate. You need to bring out those new things. So again, yes, these are things which regularly happen. Every time I want to do something new, every time I want to do something which is unique, not a regular one, you you get that uh, out of them. Relatable to me. <coughs> totally relatable to me. I get the same. Uh, what do you call it? I mean, the same obstacle, the same impediment your father gives you. Wait a job, kar le, yaar. job, kar le, uh-huh. but okay. So, oh, what about you? Yep, uh, uh, for me, again, uh, as Abhishek said, it's not about specifically coming from uh, parents, but we used to we used to think uh, in a, in a particular way that we need to centralize the profit and. Uh, in recent past, we understood that we need to distribute the, we need to share the profit to maximize the profit. So that's kind of a professional understanding we gain in last few years that uh, we should uh, uh, work collectively for a common goal and we should share profits to maximize the profit. Okay. Um, the second question is, what is that one common skill that you don't have as a person. For me, it's, it's uh, folding my laundry. I cannot do it. I just cannot. So it can be see, anything. I, yeah. <laughs> so see, I am very bad in taking decision faster. I take time to take decisions, and so this is something which bothers me a lot. <laughs> okay. That's so that came in my mind right now. And what about you, Abhishek? Um. 
Mm, I think for me, it is mostly particularly about, uh, you know, a lot of interaction with people or breaking the ice or trying to connection with a lot of people. I think Deepak knows about this as well, that I am not too familiar when I go out. So I think though we are into this industry where we are trying to connect and tell people that, you know, solo travel is good. I am not the best one. Out of See, I have stayed at a hostel for, I mean, for more than six months in a row. Yeah. Okay. And this one thing that uh, I personally felt in, in the initial time, when you see a lot of people, you meet them, you hear the stories. And I mean, there's a lot of experience to consume in the very initial days, right? With time, right. it just becomes a pattern. It becomes mundane. Yaar, rose vai stories hai, vai same wale hai. I have to tell the same stories. So does it happen with you as well? Mada, with time? Actually, uh, no, because even if the stories are same, the people are new, the faces are new and their stories may be new. You might have the same story to tell, but uh, every uh, you know new person that you meet, they might come up with a new story. And you, over the period of time, your stories as well are also change based on what you've actually heard from the others. Okay. So there may be situations where you're carrying on not just your story, but someone else's story as well. Okay, that's a different outlook, but okay, totally makes sense. And what about you, Deepak? It's, it happens. I mean, uh, uh, if, on a lighter note, I will answer this question that in a family, when uh, most of the family members keep asking, what is this backpacking? Keep on asking the same questions. Mm-hmm. So I sometimes I get, you know, I mean, what, man, now I've explained a number of times what is backpacking, but still the, that question keep on coming, what is backpacking? What in, what, what kind of business you are in? Hotel <laughs> what, what is this business all about? I mean, it's become very difficult to explain again and again. With time, the question come over or fir, it's, it's in the same pace. I mean, have people started asking this question less or less, or is it on the same pace? Ki ek hostel and now, hotel difference kya hota hai? Probably I'm not uh, allowing uh, people uh, to start this conversation again and again now. Okay. <laughs> I think there'll be I, I think there'll be still a difference between what um, you know between the current generation and the, the older generation. Right. Yes. The more people that you meet from the older generation, that will be difficult to, uh, for, uh, for us to explain them. Unless they've been well-traveled in their early stages, they've, been, they've, they've traveled particularly in Europe. Uh, you know, Europe is a place where you would see a lot of culture on hostel industry, but only when you would have tra- traveled in their early stages. If they would have traveled in the later stages, they would still not know about the backpacking industry. Okay. Uh, for the last part, if I ask you both to shoot an advice, each. Uh, it can be about life, relationship, work, career, anything. Just any piece of advice. Uh, see, uh, that's what I uh, uh, mentioned earlier as well. Identifying the root cause of the issues, problems you are facing, whether into work, life or relationship, anywhere. What are the problems? What are the issues? If you understand the root cause, you can identify the right solution. And keep solving the problem. This is this is what is the advice I believe I understood from my experience, and I always generally keep on keep discussing with the team members also that whether it is work, life, anywhere, just identify the root cause of your issues and keep solving the, them. Okay. And what about you, Abhishek? saying? I think I would pick up a favorite dialect from this movie Three Idiots, Jamil Khan ne mara tha. Bita success ke piche mat bhago, kabe suno. I think I think I would probably want to give that same advice to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to people. So if you are actually trying to do something right, something good, it will automatically come out. I mean, you you would automatically hit success. Okay. And to anyone who's aspiring to start their own backpackers hostel out there, is there a process? Is there a tip? Is there any suggestion that you would like to give them? Oh, a suggestion to uh, to someone who's looking out for opening up a backpacker hostel, like for the media. You know, uh, we we've seen a lot of people who are entering into this business. Some people enter for their passion. Some people enter because they want to create something. It's a mixed batch of things. Uh, both have their own, uh, you know, pluses and minuses. Um, 
I, I can say it's a it's a good business. It's not something which is um, which is very difficult to do. It's not something which is not not possible. Uh, as long as you are able to deliver your customers something out of the way, or if you are able to deliver the service that our customer demands, it's a good way to or, or a good thing to be in. Your business is the other customers here, right? Of course. And what about you, Deepak? Other question. Steady hard. I mean, understand the business. I mean, uh, most of the time, people who come at our property, they feel the environment vibe is very good, and then they see uh, the instant thought come in their mind: I want to start a backpacker hostel. Right. I mean, uh, there is always a different uh, side of the coin. I mean, other side of the table, it's completely different. And uh, before, without knowing all those att required attribute to run a hostel, backpacker hostel. If you are jumping into uh, opening a host, uh, uh, hostel for your own, you might end up uh, on some other way. So uh, this is my piece of advice to anyone. I mean, understand, work in that industry, understand that industry. Otherwise, we, Abhishek and me, we, 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 uh, we, we never had this opportunity to understand the industry before coming into this industry. So we right. took longer time to, to settle everything. I mean, uh, now there are a lot of hostels in India, right? If you want to open your own hostel, you have a lot of examples in, in front of you. Experience them, understand them before uh, opening a hostel. You're the very first ones to start a hostel in India, right? Yeah, I mean, the mustache uh, entity was the first, uh, first one to start the hostel in India. I Sorry. Yeah, I think it was so. It wasn't uh, so really. Uh, it wasn't the first entity. The first entity was uh, it was a different entity. But the founder of Mustache, Humber Jalan, who was the person who started Mustache, he was the first person to start the Packet Hostel in India. This was way back in 2011. The first hostel oh. in India was Asterix. It's a long story. It's sort of almost now washed away now. But but that's the truth of it. The backpacker backpacking. Hostel in India started with Asterix Hostel in Goa. Okay. I cannot find uh, this on the internet. I just saw that 2013 was the first of a match for Moustache. No, Asterix was the first hostel which was started by Ambar Jalan and Jason Darunha. These were the two guys who started this. If you try these names and Asterix, you would probably find a story belonging in 2011. Uh, both these guys are not into hostel industry anymore. Amber has moved on. He started Mustache and then he passed on the reins of Mustache to us. Uh, Jason Narunha is, uh, was continued uh, to be an owner of another hostel chain by the name of Hostel Crowd that was in Goa. That chain has completely gone now uh, post pandemic. Uh, he's moved, Jason Narunha has also moved out of India now. So he's not involved into this hostel business. So now both the, the, the members who started the first boss in India are no more into this business anymore. Okay. I totally will search for it. Asterix Hostel, huh? Okay. Asterix Hostel. Okay. So that was my question. I mean, uh, that was the last question I had. And uh, I'm so glad that you guys came first of all. And uh, this video will go live by the next week. And I hope it gets the... I mean, uh, the engagement that we are thinking of. Best of luck. Best of luck for you as well. I yeah. see uh, you're trying to do something new. Uh, good. I hope that uh, you know you are able to uh, grow what you're trying trying to create over here. Thanks, Adam, for this interview. Thanks, Adam.